The IMF is pushing for some tax increases to help contain rising debt stock and support government's quest to reduce dependency on aid. The fund raised these concerns at the launch of its Regional Economic Outlook report in Washington, D.C. George Raffi has more. IMF believes that this is part of several measures that the government can consider to help deal with its rising debt stock. The fund, for instance, believes that Ghana's total debt stock in relation to the size of the economy in percentage terms would hit 77% by the close of this year. That might not be good for a low middle income country like Ghana and the pressure that it will put on government finances. The country's total debt stock currently stands at around 263 billion Ghana cities ending July this year. But responding to a question posed by Joy Business, the director of the African Department, Abibi Salasi, speaking from Washington, D.C., believes that reviewing the country's revenue mobilization drive could help correct us, especially at a time that Ghana is poised to move ahead with less dependency on aid. As the president has been saying, uh, Ghana beyond aid, that's absolutely the right vision. And of course, that aid has to be replaced by uh, tax revenues and other permanent domestic sources of financing rather than debt. And so effecting that transfer is really what's going to be key. And we'll be working with the government uh, through the Article 4 process to provide technical advice, whatever the government needs. But with the IMF's projection of the debt GDP ratio hitting 77%, Maybe for some, it's just a matter of time in terms of the IMF and the World Bank classifying Ghana as a high distressed country and the road challenge that will present to the economy, the possible impact on the cost of borrowing and how that would impact on government finances going forward. In the 2020 budget, government, for instance, is setting aside some 21 billion Ghana cities just for paying interest on loans. The country currently spends significant amounts of revenue raised to pay its debts and salaries of the public sector workers, leaving little for capital projects. But the question still stands, are Ghanaians ready to pay more taxes to deal with this challenge, which are looking at the cost of borrowing and its impact on the economy? Or whether it's about how these taxes are used and they're going to the right sectors of the economy to deal with this challenge.